Survivor has been on TV for well over 23 years now, and with so many seasons and episodes, there have been times that the show leaves us with our eyes wide, mouths open, wondering what the heck is going on. These moments can be exhilarating, and some can be so, so hard to watch. That's what today's video is all about. Five times Survivor blew my mind, volume one. By the way, go ahead and comment some mind-blowing moments you think I should include in future videos. Okay. Now with that, number one. Our first moment, well, actually multiple moments, takes place in Survivor 45 when we meet our three tribes, Bello, who is unimportant to us, Reba, which will be important later on, and Lulu, who is a tribe consisting of hot messes. Here's some proof. The season starts off with Jeff asking Brandon of Lulu a question, and he immediately cries. Oh no. Emily openly talks mad smack about Bruce as the only returnee here, even though he played like a total of 12 hours in his last season before being medically evacuated. And then during the reward challenge, Brandon can't climb a ladder. I kid you not, he makes so, so many attempts, but seems to struggle with this extremely basic task. The season just started. He's not even starving yet. So obviously, Brandon loses them reward and back at their camp, Hannah is sweeping the ground outside instead of building the shelter. Is there anyone normal on this tribe? We see Emily being a cynical negative Nancy that gets on everyone's nerves. And then Sabaya and Caleb say, obviously aliens built the pyramids. We can all agree with that. Yeah, they're talking about the pyramids in Egypt and they're not being ironic or jokesters. At the immunity challenge, Brandon almost dies climbing up a wall and they lose immunity by a mile. So the question is, who should be voted off? I mean, seriously, who do you think should be voted off? Well, before Tribal Council, Hannah says, The moment that we lost, I felt relief because I was like, maybe they'll vote me out I can go home. Someone from our tribe has to go anyway. Every single person except me really wants to be here. But like, everyone wants Emily out. My concern is like, how can I get them to write my name? I want to sleep in a bed tonight. Maybe I like my comfort and that's okay. Yeah, I want nicotine and I want food. Yeah, I know, but you're fine. Do I have to? You have to. You one? literally have to. Okay, fine. Hannah is going on this diatribe. She wants to quit because she's hungry, but I don't necessarily want to be here without Hannah. I'm gonna cry. Hannah's profession is a therapist whose job it is to help people through their problems no, I'm not kidding. We then see Brandon cry because he has acid reflux, and at Tribal Council we learn Emily is the target because she is weird and socially aggressive. Those are their words to describe her, not mine. So with Emily on the verge of being voted out, Hannah, the therapist whose job it is to help people, says, I mean, I think it's amazing, and I just keep thinking I'd love to watch it unfold from the comfort of my home. I'm not kidding, I'm having a really hard time. I was thinking about food while they were all talking. And I see five people who want to be here more than anything. And I love them, but like everything in my body is like, I'm not going back to that camp. Please don't make me go back to that camp. And like, I'm just gonna be really honest. But like, I don't need to be voted out to go home. All right, Hannah, grab your torch. Hannah, the tribe has spoken. Oh my God, is this edge of extinction because I'm not going. Wow, did she quit because she needs to vape that badly? Holy cow, episode two sees Brandon unable to walk down the beach without falling, him being the reason they lose immunity by a mile, again, and at tribal they vote him off. That makes sense. But then in episode three, they lose immunity again, while the sad music kicks in for them. And because Sabaya was planning a flip on Caleb, she is voted off. Episode four has others saying Sean is so, so fake. I mean, we haven't talked about Sean yet, but yeah, he was on Sabaya's side and uh, it didn't work out for him at the last tribal. So now they're like, Sean's just sucking up to us. He's so fake. But then their woes have come to an end when Jeff says it is time to swap tribes, but we aren't done yet. Oh no. Caleb stays on Lulu. Emily goes to Bello and Sean goes to Reba. Now Reba is important for us, but why? Well. They lose immunity, and Sifu is the target to be voted off. Sean has integrated himself pretty well socially into this tribe considering the short amount of time he's had, and so, at Tribal Council. It's being here that I've realized that my true adventure of a lifetime is back home with my husband, Matt, and I know how bad that all four of you really want this. I don't want to take your dream away from you because this 
It's not mine, and I'm at peace with that because my dream's at home. So respectfully, I would kindly ask that when you vote tonight that you write my name down on the parchment. Fourth person voted out of Survivor 45. Sean. Sean, the tribe has spoken. Sean is a school principal. His job is to run a school full of children so they do not give up on their dreams and make something of themselves. And he quit to supposedly see his spouse when on Survivor. You don't go home when you get voted off. You stay in Fiji. Wow. Just wow. By the way, thank you for watching this channel and supporting it by liking, subscribing, and using the YouTube join button. If you want to help pick what videos I make and watch them all weeks and even months early, then consider financially supporting Once Upon an Island on Patreon. It only costs a few bucks a month and you can cancel at any time. Thank you for your support. Number two, we jump to season 20 heroes versus villains. And this is a moment that has been a long time coming to be talked about on this channel. That's right. JT and Russell. Just hearing that made some of you cringe and some of you squeal in delight. So let's lay out some of the information you need to know. JT finds an idol in episode eight, but also sees how the villains seem to be voting off all of the men on their tribe. So far, it's been three in a row, while all of the women are safe. With Parvati over there, it seems like a safe bet that the women are running the show again, just like her last time playing in Micronesia. She needs to go. The heroes win immunity, and in episode nine, they see that coach of the villain tribe is gone. That is now four men in a row. It's so obvious. Rupert, what's the reaction to seeing it's coach that is now gone from the game? Cannot believe coach is gone. You know, but that women's alliance looks very strong. It's kind of obvious. JT, obvious to you guys, it's a women's alliance. I would have bet my life Russell or Coach One was going to be gone. So the safe, logical plan is to win immunity again and work with Russell if he somehow makes the merge. It is wholly dependent on Russell surviving all these women knocking out the men, though, and JT can't depend on that. So he comes up with a risky home run play. I got a plan. Uh-oh. JT, you got a plan. Russell knows he's going next. I give him a hidden immunity idol. He votes out Parvati. Bam. Parvati's gone. Then just pick the girls off. Pick them off like sitting ducks and vote Russell's ass out six. You writing your letter to Russell, buddy? Yeah. Russell, this is a huge turning point in this game. Just by competing against you and the few handshakes we've had, I feel like I can trust you. We will most likely merge your 10 people and then you will be completely safe with us. Our five plus you will remain strong till the girls are done with. This is your chance to show you're not a villain. I'll put that at the end right here. Good. I think it's really crazy to give Russell the idol. You don't know what's going on over there. He could be in with the girls for all we know. This is Survivor history. Oh my gosh. If we win, I'm gonna try to give Russell my hidden immunity idol. Based on me guessing that he's on the outs, which I really feel like he is. Or this is our chance. That'll give us the numbers going into the merge. Uh, why is no one telling him no? I mean, if it works, then great, but they don't know Russell at all. He is the only player here whose season has not yet aired on TV, so He's kind of an unknown entity, but JT does it. He gives Russell the idol and the next day it is time for the merge. And sure enough, Russell is safe. So I guess it worked, but then so is Parvati. What is she doing here? That's a bit confusing. Russell tells JT and Rupert he played the idol to save himself. So Parvati also played an idol to save herself. JT's like, yep, that makes sense. But little does JT know what really happened once he gave Russell the idol. I don't even have to find idols. People are actually giving me idols. You don't hand the enemy the idol, especially when his name is Russell Hands. You don't do that. That's a no-no. Play the idol tonight. For sure. To save yourself. Save myself. Because clearly, you're on the outside of an all-devouring female alliance. Right. I put that part in myself. I can't believe he's writing all this. Like he's telling me what to do. He's, he's giving me pointers. How do you give the idol king an idol? Here, Mr. Russell. Here's an idol, this one's just for you. Well, thank you, you know what? I think JT just handed me $1 million. Hey, I guess he can afford it. Hopefully I can trust you and you're not truly a villain. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Let's do this together. <laughs> See you soon. BFF forever. <laughs> XOXO, JT. Destroy this right when you finish reading. <laughs> JT gave Russell his heart today. And Russell is just gonna stab it a million times, <laughs> a million times over, and hand it to me, and I'm gonna eat it. 
<laughs> and the most ironic part in all of this is that Russell gives Parvati the idol that JT gave him, and she uses it to save the villains and vote off JT. It is too, too good. Number three. Now let's jump forward to season 23 South Pacific for just a minute. Back in volume six of the jaw dropping series and even in its own dedicated video, I explored how Brandon Hance was emotionally manipulated and exploited by his cult-like alliance to the point that they tricked him into giving up immunity to show them loyalty only for them to instead vote him out. It was gross. But Brandon was aspiring to be a good person. So let's pick up from where he was voted off and tricked, and now we are at the live South Pacific reunion. So what, what's the reaction when you get back home, when your uncle, Russell, the most notorious villain ever, as you said, destroyed our family name? You get home, are they happy with how you played? It was, unfortunately, not everybody's happy. Uh, <laughs> uh, especially Russell. Nobody really accepted me the way that I wanted to. Nobody I just from your wanted family. To, nobody from my family. I mean, I... Uh, Is anybody here from your family? No, no, sir. Nobody's here from your family? No, sir. You just, you watched Brandon play, and one of the things he said is, I want to restore the Hans family name. Do you think he did, did that? I think that he went out there to change something that that I brought to the game. I made greatness. I brought the game to a level that is, you can't even comprehend. He, what he what did Brandon there. do wrong? He, everything. He didn't do one thing right. He, go, he went out there, he went out there, he went out there to change the Hans name, to change what I did. How do you do that? I mean, that doesn't even make sense. Holy crap, his family didn't come to see him and his uncle is too busy stroking his own ego to acknowledge that Brandon did anything right. What a blow to this 19 year old's psyche. Well, only six months after that reunion show aired, Brandon is asked to play again on season 26, Caramon, and he was not emotionally or mentally recovered at all from how he was treated previously. We see it on day one as his tribe is worried about his behavior as he seems to flip flop between being nice and on the verge of a mental breakdown. What's worse is that Philip, the socially unaware egomaniac, is getting on Brandon's nerves. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Philip is probably the biggest bully I've ever met in my life. Wait, what? He's what? making me feel like really uncomfortable. Like, Wait, why? He's calling himself the CEO of the tribe. I'm on a need to know basis. You guys couldn't trust me because of my last season. That's why you didn't tell me to vote for last night. And I have a feeling that's gonna happen again. Like, I'm just saying. You don't want to fight with me. It's Special Agent Pink Panther was freaking Inspector Gadget thought he could pull his uh, special agent tricks and that's gonna be his downfall in this game. The simple fact of the matter is, it's like he's treating people like garbage. I think he's starting to Boston rob us a little bit. I, and I don't like that. You gotta cut the head off the snake. And I'm not going anarch, like if he's the leader, I'm not trying to Listen, throw a- Listen, not any kind of leader. Everyone else on the tribe can roll their eyes at the ridiculousness of Philip, but for whatever reason, he really gets under Brandon's skin. We then see Brandon say he has a massive passion for his family and would do anything for them. So he wants to be voted off so he can get back to them. And people are a bit surprised by this request because he said that he was debating whether to pee in their beans and rice or not. Um, excuse me, what? Why was he going to do that? The next morning, he actually says, ah, guys, I have changed my mind, don't vote me off. And uh, yeah, I am experiencing extreme whiplash. He even tells Eric that, hey, if anyone targets me, I am going nuclear and burning this camp down. And then he makes loud explosion noises just for fun. By the time episode five comes around, everything has been building up to this moment. I think we can all agree that Brandon is definitely unstable and unpredictable. What are you supposed to do with that? It's just, I don't know what to do with it. This Philip and Brandon rivalry, it's getting to me. I woke up this morning, who starts the fire? Brandon starts the fire. Who's the only dude in this tribe who can start a fire with a piece of flint? Brandon. So I don't need no old 54 year old punk bitch telling me don't bite the hand that feeds you. He doesn't feed me. I'm a hands. I feed me. No, Brandon. Come on, Brandon. Brandon, help now. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, Phil. Here's a reason to vote me out, you little. Huh? 
with your stuff all rust bull no? I'm the author of my fate, buddy. I'm the author of my fate. We realize that this is going to be a challenge for immunity, and it's for that reason that we're going to forfeit the challenge so that we may go to tribal. Let me help you out a little bit, okay? They don't respect anything about the fans. That's bull Corinne. Complete bull Okay, Brandon. Don't play, miss. I'm cool with the fans, period. And Phillips speaks so highly of himself. Stop talking about yourself. Boston Rob took you to the end of the game. You didn't do anything. You were made fun of. And you come here and you tell me, don't bite the hand that feeds you? I feed myself. You need to grow up. You need to shut up. OK, why don't we just cut to the chase? We're having tribal council right now. You good with this? I'm good with it. All right, six person voted out of this game. Brandon Hans. Ever since Brandon Hans played, we haven't seen any other Hans, including him or Russell, on Survivor again, and they didn't even allow Brandon to come back to the live reunion. That mental breakdown is the last we have seen of the Hanses on the show. Number 4. Let's go back to Season 19 Samoa since Russell says he's the greatest of all time and Brandon did nothing. I figured why not look at what he did prior to Brandon to get this supposed title. Well, in Russell's first season playing, he gets well over 100 confessionals and is the narrative focus of the season. Anything he does remotely well at the show shines a spotlight on while it tries to ignore his sidekick, Natalie White. She is a kind lady who makes friends with the others while Russell only makes enemies. Though he does constantly say over and over again how he is the greatest of all time, so it often makes the audience feel a bit delusional and they start to believe him. And heck, by the time episode 10 rolls around, he knows he has this game in the bag as he talks to Natalie. It feels really good to be aligned with Russell. I mean, he is uh, the most powerful player in this game. He knows that whatever he votes, I vote too. So really, he's got two votes no matter what. Anyway, he wants to, to play it. When it comes down to brass knuckles and it's just me and you and somebody else, you have to swear to me. You ain't gonna think that I'm gonna beat you because I played the game better and vote me on. Swear on Mick. You're gonna start thinking that's a lot of money. Your brain's gonna start working. Who better to take? There's no way she can beat me in votes. She followed and did everything I told her to do. She wouldn't even know how to talk. She might even say, oh, he's right, give it all to him. You know, she's so sweet, I love it. <laughs> it's a shame we even have to sit through five more episodes to wait and see him be crowned as the king. Him and Natalie do reach the end of the game, of course. All the while, he fights with people and bullies, and he even bullies Natalie, while she stays kind and humble. So we go to Final Tribal Council, where the king prepares himself to be given the title of Soul Survivor. That is until the realization hits that the jury doesn't respect his scorched earth gameplay at all, as perfectly exemplified by Eric's speech. Russell, this hurts me. We got nothing in common. You played an unethical game, admittedly played an unethical game, but you sit there proud of it. Natalie, people will call you weak. People will say that you are undeserving. Why are those characteristics any less admirable as lying, cheating, and stealing. Why does he get a free pass, but your wrong way of playing is admonished? You would say that you were probably the least deserving of the title of Soul Survivor. But maybe, just maybe, in an environment filled with arrogance, delusional entitlement, maybe the person who thinks that she's least deserving is probably the most. You got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congratulations. Get this, Russell loses in a 7-2 landslide. He comes back to play again the next season and does even worse, getting zero votes at Final Tribal Council, and then has the gall after both seasons to say he did everything and everyone else did nothing. It's a bit wild. Number 5. But let's jump forward to Season 20 Heroes vs Villains again and give credit to Russell for one move he did pull off. You see, at the beginning of the season, he made an alliance with Danielle and Parvati. And that's it, an alliance of three versus an alliance of six. Not sure what the game plan is, but okay. He does make sure to let us know that he is now the Michael Jordan of Survivor. Those are his words, not mine. Now the villains do win immunity after immunity thanks to Boston Rob. So this whole thing of him only having two allies doesn't really bite him in the butt because it doesn't have a chance to. Not until episode six when Jeff says, both tribes are going to tribal council no matter what. 
have fun. So the majority alliance has Boston Rob saying, hey, we're just going to split our votes three and three. It doesn't matter if Russell has an idol or not. Truly, what Boston Rob's saying is a foolproof plan that will not fail no matter what. And he's right. I mean, he really is. Russell has an idol and a 3-3 split ensures that no matter who Russell plays his idol for, someone from Russell's alliance is gone. So Russell decides to do something a bit devious. What I'm going to do is it. breaking my heart. So I'm going to vote for poverty. Yeah, you need to. And then that'd be it. Yeah. She'll go home. I started thinking, you know, I got to play this game for myself. Okay. When Russell came and told me that he wanted to vote out poverty, I thought it was actually an excellent opportunity to maybe flop my vote to poverty. I mean, I want her out. I just want to get it over with and get some hot dog in my mouth. Is this actually going to work? Unlikely. A lot of the time when a predictable vote off is about to happen, the show will pretend that, oh, maybe this crazy alternate plan will happen instead. But often, it doesn't. So we go to tribal council where everyone votes and... I think I'm gonna take the target off of my back. No, not this way. Poverty? Are you serious? Thank you. This is indeed a hidden immunity idol. Any votes cast for poverty will not count. First vote, Russell. Russell, two votes, Russell. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Poverty does not count. Tyson. Tyson. Six person voted out of Survivor, Heroes versus Villains. Tyson. Tyson, chop spoken. What the heck? Why did Tyson flip his vote to Parvity? I have thought about it critically and even thought about it from his perspective. And unlike JT's letter, it doesn't make sense. I don't get it at all. So what mind blowing moments in Survivor history should make it into the next volume? Comment below and let me know. Thanks for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.